Welcome to Akashic Skies. Spirituality, health, wellness, entrepreneurship, regular people in the community, music, etc. It's all here in the Akashic Records. Find us on YouTube at Akashic Skies, on Instagram at Akashic Skies. Uh, if you like tie dyes and other items, check out Akashic Sky Dyes on Instagram. There will be a website coming soon, so stay tuned. All right, so what's up, everyone? This is Akashic. It's a little bit of everything. I'm here with Rory. He's the CTO, CTO of a startup financial company, Anna Coder. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, yeah. Um, so my name is Rory Gavush. I uh, like like James said. Basically, I'm the CTO of a company called Harvested Financial. What does that mean? It, it's like really weird for me because I'm like super young, right? But basically, I do a bunch of like tech stuff, um, set up the infrastructure for the financial company so that we can uh, provide really good products for people. Our mission basically is like the derivatives are for everyone. Um, derivatives being like the financial product, they like kind of gets a bad rap. Um, basically, we just like want to help people do that. So I'm actually a registered financial advisor and. Our goal is to just like help people use these kind of like complex financial products that are really beneficial to banks, but I think uh, the standard person should have access to them too, and that's kind of what we're here to do. We also have a charity called Community Yield. Um, that's probably the thing that I'm the most, or not the most excited about, I'm excited about everything, but um, it's really cool because it's focused on the psychology of money and like helping people better understand their finances from a kind of behavioral aspect if you're familiar with behavioral economics, but um, it's, uh, it's like an interesting time. Yeah, and I thought that was really cool. I heard you, or I overheard you on one of your um, like uh, Zoom calls, or however yeah, you guys yeah. do it, uh, talking about the charities and talking basically about what getting a deal means. Because some, like, I've had coworkers that they go into a store and they're like, "Yeah, I got a deal on this, this, and this, and this." And I was like, "What did you go to the store for?" Like, yeah, yeah. And they went there to, to go get groceries and ended up with, you know, Bunch of extra stuff. two shoes, yeah, some cl like clothes for their kids, yeah, yeah. like stuff that they wouldn't necessarily get, you know, and, yeah. and it's kind of at that point, opportunity cost would be like excess. You're yeah. kind of going more negative. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, no, it, it's, it's really interesting stuff to dive into. Basically, like people don't sell you things they don't make money off of, right? Yeah. Like, um, so when you walk into a store and you're like, oh my God, like I got all these like deals and things, it's like you probably didn't quite get like the deal you were looking for and like i think kind of the best deal is like getting exactly what you want right getting exactly what you want at a price that's reasonable or a price that 100%. is probably below what it was like listed for retail i'm like an anti retail yeah. all the way yeah. i like i like secondhand stuff if i buy a car i, t yeah. I typically like to get a car that's that's used lightly yeah, yeah. used and you can tell once you get to know the owners you have a little bit of like back and forth have yeah. a little bit of like conversation with um with the owner and you can tell what type of you can give the kind of feel for what type of person they are like yeah like if they, they take care of this thing yeah, yeah they'll have like all the like records and stuff and because um, yeah. like depreciation you know that's, that's something thing. that you think about with basically all the stuff you get and um i think i also heard you talk about uh buying the most expensive thing doesn't yeah. always necessarily mean buying the best thing what do you mean right. by that yeah, no, it's a, it's like an interesting question. Um, basically, like, there's like the price mechanism, right? Which is like, oh, mm -hmm. this is like what it's priced at and like this is what people will pay for it. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of times you find that the stuff that has, like there's a distinction between price and value basically. Exactly. Right? So like something that you buy, like, you know, if you pay $50 for it, that's like what you paid, right? Yeah. But like the value of the thing is like, is it worth $50? And that's what you're getting back, right? Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's probably what I mean is like, sometimes when you're buying a gift for someone, like, just because you dropped like three grand on something, which would be a lot for a gift, I guess. But yeah. like, just because you spent a ton on it doesn't mean it's going to be great. What yeah. matters is like the value. Are you getting like the thing that's important? Are you getting a thing that's like going to matter to the other person, whatever it is? And is it going to fit the audience? Yeah, like you yeah. said, the other person, like if you get somebody a ring, yeah. that's $5,000 that doesn't wear rings, hates rings, hates the concepts of diamonds, yeah, yeah, blood diamonds, like yeah. it's not going to have a lot of value. And then you're going to take it to the pawn shop and they're going to show you like, oh, here's $200 because we're going to, we're gonna resell it and get yeah. money because retail diamonds. What are they actually worth? Yeah, yeah. you know. Um, so yeah, what else? Uh, how did we meet? How did we meet uh, through Airbnb? Yeah. So um, basically, I've been I've been doing Airbnb for about a year, and yeah. uh, 
the last the couple last couple guests just ended up instantly being awesome friends like yeah. it felt like having friends over i felt yeah. almost like like they should i should be paying them like <laughs> come hang out because it's yeah, been the yeah. most stimulating inspiring and now we're doing a podcast um yeah. And like you, you show me some awesome concepts, like uh, what is like team, team compassion, yeah, yeah. team sincere. Yeah. Uh, do you want to tell them a little bit about what that is? Totally, yeah. Um, so this kind of came up when we were talking about like all the stuff that's going on in the political sphere, and I think one of the things that I find is really difficult is like wanting like the best for everybody, yeah. and like it, it gets very politicized. Like, what's the best? Well, if you're a Republican, you think one thing's best. If you're Democratic, you think or a Democrat, you think one thing's best. Yeah. Um, and Basically, like, I don't really want to, like, be on one side or the other. Like, I just want to be on, like, Team Compassion, right? Like, yeah. care for people. Be on, like, Team Sincere. Like, really, when you say something, mean it. Um, yeah. And, like, when you want the best for people, like, all, like, agendas aside, don't inherit any beliefs. Like, go for the thing that will actually help people get, like, the best thing possible. Yeah. And what, what like, comes to my mind when I think of that is yeah. universal truth. Yeah. And what is, like, when you get to essence, compassion is kind of, like, an essential idea. It's yeah. not... It's not political. It's not you know Republican or Democratic. It's it's compassion, and it's like com- it's yeah. compassion for the Republican and the Democrat, yeah. and the the hater and the the hippies. Yes, yeah, yeah. it's, it's compassion for the whole world. Yeah, and I think that's kind of what we need today is the, the bridges to bridge the gaps yeah, and to exactly. unify unify people because everyone has their thing that platform that they're running on. Yeah, and it's basically they're running away against the opposition and right. running into the same people that have the same beliefs. Right, right. Them. So it's like, how can we get people to be more cohesive? Right. Because and if it, you want to make change, yeah. I think you have to do that in like a neutral way and mm-hmm. not neutral in the sense that you don't have an agenda, you don't have things you're going for, but neutral in the sense that like you don't leave anyone out, right? Yeah. You're not trying to like leave people behind. You're not trying to like say like you're part of the in group, you're part of the out group. Like you mm-hmm. really have to sincerely care about the other people and like want the best for them. And, and I yeah. think that's like where compassion for me really kind of soars. It's this like neutral word that doesn't have like you, you can't be compassionate to someone in like a bad way. Exactly. And it's, um, you know, inclusion versus exclusion. It's yeah. like the exclusive groups. It's yeah. like the, the country club or something versus like, yeah. so things should be in, in, inclusive. But um, also when you get inclusive with everyone's intersectionality yeah. nowadays, it's, it's really hard for people to come to a conclusion. Um, that's another thing. Because um, some of the groups are trying to have like a single point of like focus. Yeah. So that they can get something done. But um uh, a lot of people are coming in with other things right, that they're interested right. in. So that's that's kind of a tough thing. Um, another thing, you know, like uh, that we got into uh, that was inspiring for me was like yeah. just like romance, you know. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I know like uh, what I saw was kind of a parallel with like yeah. your business and your passions. Like, yeah. That also goes into like your relationships. Yeah. And like, so um, that was inspiring for me. I got I got really lost in just being productive. Like, yeah. I got to get all the stuff done. I have all these like. Yeah. Things, and then I'm like, sometimes I brush aside a lot of the social stuff. Yeah. Um, but I realized like you came all the way here. Yeah. To like you know kind yeah, of yeah, yeah. pursue something and um. Yeah, yeah. And um, you kind of took a little bit of a risk, you yeah. know. And um. I think like um, basically I'm I'm visiting wonderful lacrosse Wisconsin. Oh yeah, like what brought you to lacrosse? Yeah, <laughs> You're from yeah. Chicago. For, uh, yeah, so I grew up in Oregon. Mm-hmm. I spent a couple of years in California. I went to school at UC Berkeley. Now I'm in Chicago, um, working on like the start up there, right? And that that's mm-hmm. kind of like the the singular focus of my professional life. But there's obviously things that you know you don't just have a professional life, you have a personal yeah. life as well. So, um, yeah, there's a girl that I have a have a very good crush on, and she uh, lives in Lacrosse. I came to Lacrosse. Um, mm-hmm. That's how you and I met, and um, I think we talked about like those kind of things. And yeah, I, my my thoughts on it are basically this of like. You, you'll, like, meet people in life, mm-hmm. right? And you'll meet people that you, like, know that you can be friends with. It's very easy to, like, chat with, right? And I think in many ways we have that of, like, yeah, dude, we're buddies. Like, yeah, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not too worried if I ever, like, hit you up of, like, oh, I'm in lacrosse or if you're in um, Chicago. Like, we'd go out for a drink type of thing. Yeah. you get coffee just because, you yeah. know? Um, I think in the rare instances there's people you meet, like, romantically uh, that, like, fall into that camp, too. And you kind of just, like, have to, I don't know, be real about it, right? So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I guess for those listening at home, like her and I had a conversation. Um, I think things are in a fine place. Cool. Yeah. And um, it inspired me to share my feelings with somebody that I was talking to. And it turned out good. Yeah. Um, 
for me it was like I was I was worried that it would like put a strain on our friendship or yeah. something if it wasn't received well but I realized like uh there's like a time to shoot your shot you can yeah. sell the shots you don't take whatever yeah. but um also you're always going to bring that with you like if yeah. you have those feelings for this person and if you can't be authentic with them yeah. and still be cool afterwards like let's say this person was like oh no i don't feel that way yeah like well, can we still be homies like yeah that would be a good friend yeah but um i think a word that you said that i really love is risk and like risk yeah. you just got to take risks like mm-hmm. it, sometimes it's scary and like there's like oh like is this really a good idea blah 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 like yeah maybe um right but like you're not gonna know unless you do it and i think being active in your life and like going after the things you really want like that's that's like the point yeah and that's even like with this uh doing like a podcast yeah. doing videos i was afraid to i wasn't like a youtuber yeah. I, yeah. I wanted to do youtube like 10 years ago mm-hmm. when i was like a kid but i was like i don't have totally. a camera i don't I, I don't really like how i sound i don't yeah. i don't have like the ch- ch- charisma yeah like i don't really know what to talk about yeah i was just like starting college i was partying a lot yeah but then i got to a point where i'm like you just have to shoot your shot like, yeah just start making videos and post it and like take the criticism and just run with it and i yeah. think i started doing that with vine because none of my friends I didn't know this. none of my friends were on okay. vine so i i could do it without any criticism or like fear of my peers yeah. and that's like messing up in public um i was listening to a lot of this stuff is also inspired by Jim Quick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this guy, guy was saying um, he failed horribly in schools because yeah. he, 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 he loved taking risks and he loved failing on his own, yeah. like on his own um, ventures. Yeah, yeah. But in school, like that was the most fearful thing in his whole life. So yeah. he couldn't like he couldn't he just had to have this like passive attitude. Like, yeah. I don't care. Yeah, like yeah. and he, he wasn't engaged because he was like he was afraid of school and like that's yeah. how i was i was afraid of my peers so like i was always trying to cheat and like play it off yeah um so yeah i got to that point so vine was my thing and yeah I, yeah cool i made some really weird vines and i got a lot of some of them got a lot of attention and um <laughs> it felt it felt really cool because that's like what i wanted to do but i was like yeah, hiding yeah. it i was hiding it because yeah. i didn't want my friends to see it and even now like I shut down my Facebook. Sure. I, I don't know if I would post my YouTube on my Facebook because it's yeah. a whole different side of me than all these people know. So it's like, yeah, it's re- it is really interesting how how peers can in fact impact our trajectory. Yeah, like, there's like, definitely like, like, fear. like um, yeah. there's like context switching, right? Of like you know mm-hmm. you're a different person around different people, right? Like there's some people you'll talk to about some things, there's some people you talk to other mm-hmm. about other things, and you know there's like almost different versions of yourself. Um, yeah, and I think the way I've kind of like thought about that is. Y- thematically there's going to be like you know the party version of myself and then there's like the the super like thoughtful version of myself and this kind of thing and um i think what's like really uh i love this cat um come on kitty i think there's some really interesting stuff when it comes to like essence right like there's a a philosopher spinoza and he talks about this and one of the big ideas is like that there's some essence behind like everything right yeah and then there's probably some essence like who you are as a person so like mm-hmm. even if there's like party rory and then there's like thoughtful rory like right that person like has something shared in between them yeah and that's like that essence and tapping into that is like i think the important thing and and trying not to get too far away from it is like yeah. also like what really matters you bring that with you everywhere no yeah. matter what face you put on and um i was like my major was um uh communication studies interpersonal Total. communication studies and digital media and broadcasts with a minor in ethnic and racial studies so like faces face work mm-hmm. we bring different faces to each individual we talk to yeah. and um i had a lot of trouble i think like like allowing certain faces in certain yeah. places like yeah, letting yeah. them inner like overlap what so, was it like were you just like scared or yeah i think i i was a i was afraid of like like being authentic around yeah. some people because uh um i think i think when i was partying it didn't align with my values yeah and then when i'd see those people in public like you know the next day yeah um it was just kind of it was just kind of strange like yeah, i wasn't yeah, the yeah. same i was just, i'm like i sometimes i'm just like really low-key laid back and yeah I'm not super I'm, I'm kind of an introvert but then yeah, when i yeah. go out i'd be like this extrovert sometimes it'd just be like right. really live so i felt like i was like not living up to expectations in the real real world and yeah um i think i'm just like my worst critic like most of us are right where when you see your face every day you see yourself every day you you, yeah. you pick out nuances that like regular strangers don't see totally and you um so yeah i think i think that was a big part of it and um i feel like i'm finally it took years to finally grow into myself yeah, and like yeah. grow through some jobs that i didn't want to do 
yeah to get yeah. to a point where i'm like dude i'm, I'm just going for it yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think know? everyone kind of yeah. has that like journey right like, yeah you just gotta like do it and I, I think i'm still on it i think you're probably still on it like you you have it's like a constantly a dynamic problem that you have to like deal with right like being dynamic, yourself yeah constantly switching yeah um, even, even with Airbnb, I was like, the rooms have to be like the other listings around yeah. here. Like, yeah. I'm going to look like, I just, I just got the house. I didn't have like a lot of money to like invest in all yeah. the space. And it was a lot of s stuff to get, like just getting the linens and stuff was like a few hundred dollars, like getting yeah. the beds, getting like, get it all set up, getting yeah. like a, a keypad and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and then to go further and like replace all the curtains and get yeah. like desks in there. Like yeah. I wanted everyone to have all the amenities, but then it came to a point one day where I'm like, you know what just post it and and learn as you go like yeah. start improving as you do it and yeah, yeah through the experience it inspired me to like kick to like jump start and like yeah. start working harder to improve the rooms yeah and meeting yeah. people that i cared about yeah, and like yeah. have really cool connections with it gave meaning to like yeah. improving the experience for it people. like matters now right yeah. it's like not like i'm doing this for this person right like there's mm -hmm. like, a tangible person that i like will make this service better for exactly right? like it makes it much easier to do the work much easier to like write off the investments these yeah. yeah and i i try not to like i i really you know the eastern philosophy and all yeah. stuff that yeah. you you saw that i kind of like am trying to like embody sure, and like sure. learn more about like the non-attachment so yeah. like a lot of people what i've what i've been hearing is they come in and like well this, this vibe is really cool here and yeah. sometimes i'll let that like i'll hold on to that i'm like oh, they like it like yeah yeah whereas like you can't hold on too much to that like good validation just as yeah. much you don't as you don't want to hold on to like bad criticism like yeah. non-constructive criticism or like hate right you just kind of got to let it like, like check it in like take that jot that down and see that you're doing something good yeah. and kind of like stay balanced right right so yeah that's and i think it's like it's good to have like a balanced perspective on that right like mm -hmm. you know you take in feedback improve and iterate but there's um actually it's a really good term it comes from like the software engineering space but it's called like perpetual beta you would think oh, of things cool. as like always in perpetual beta which yeah. is like you can have the best app ever right beta phase, but like yeah. you're you're always going to be improving it so like you it can be the best that it's ever been it can be like the top notch for like where it's at right now yeah but like just know that in the future it's going to be better right yeah so i think for me if you like if i ever get compliments or things like that it's like i really appreciate that that's great like i'm glad that you've given me that feedback but like i'm still working on these things to improve and, and that goes back to like the dynamic problem right like exactly you, you're an unfinished product and your clay still being molded and it'll never get finished yeah yeah that's um i also listen to abraham hicks okay. i mentioned it uh she's a channel uh sh i think she's amazing the stuff that she comes up with and yeah. just uh tapping into the in in infinite potential of like yeah. source energy whatever that looks like to you. It's yeah. like the abundant energy that like channels through all of us. Yeah. And realizing that we're constantly improving, constantly growing, constantly expanding, yeah. and it'll never get finished and you have to be okay with that. Yeah. Cause that's kind of what I was saying. It's like, oh, if I get this done, then yeah, I'll be yeah. good. And even, even while you guys are here, it's like, if I get this all painted and I yeah, get, yeah. if I get this set up, and I forget, then they'll like it and then we can do a podcast. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, well, it's, it's, it's sometimes, it's yeah, even yeah, if yeah. I did have it all painted, I'd probably eventually want like a new microphone to make yeah. it even better. And I want yeah. like a new GoPro. And yeah, you gotta just go for it. It just keeps, yeah, go go for it. Um, <laughs> a, yeah, so like I said, I grew up in Oregon, right? So a lot, a mm -hmm. lot of stuff for me of like core life lessons, it kind of gets like mapped to like things that I've done in Oregon. And one of the, the lessons I've learned pretty deeply is like, you, you're always kind of afraid to like jump into the river, basically. Yeah. But like what you, what you can realize is you don't actually have to like convince yourself to jump into the river. Like you just like have to kick your leg over the edge and like yeah. the momentum will take you. Exactly. Um, so I think that's like the powerful thing for me is like, just if you put it out there, the momentum will like carry you so hard yeah. that it's the kickstart isn't as hard as like the actual thing. So if you just focus on the kickstart, kick and you start. go for that, that's pretty easy to do. Like I'll just mm -hmm. set up the room, like go for it. And yep. then the momentum will carry it and it'll be so obvious all the next part. So like, kick your foot over the edge and then you're falling yeah. into the river and then you're swimming it's awesome yeah it's like rolling out of bed in the morning yeah it's like you could hit snooze i can sometimes there's times when i'll hit snooze for a long time <laughs> but then there's sometimes where yeah. you just have that like it's that there's a fine line when you kick your leg over the edge yeah like, it's like the switch you can put in your head like i don't fully agree on this but like you're you like your autonomic system or whichever yeah, like system you're it is, going. you just kick it yeah, kick it. yeah. And like in the morning i can there's like sometimes I like be half awake and yeah. I'll be like oh, I'll just go back to sleep. But then they'll like there'll be like half split second where I can yeah. sleep for another hour or just jump out of bed 
and yeah. get up and start my practice, like jump into the studio, like right, start a right. start a product project or something. Definitely, definitely. And then the momentum is there. Yeah. Like, like once you there. get rolling, like you're going. You yeah. Know, it's like snowball effect. Something I heard someone said is, uh, you can take your foot off the gas, but don't step on the brake. Interesting. I mean, unless unless you're driving a car, but that analogy <laughs> really kind of made yeah, sense yeah. for me. Like, don't slam on the brakes. You can let off the gas and coast for a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, when you put on the brakes and lock it up. Yeah. Sometimes you can get stuck. So definitely, definitely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I also think that like people can get in their heads a lot about like, oh, like I want to like do all these changes and all these things, and it's like, mm -hmm. you know, what what's interesting is like, let's say you wanted to make like I don't know a product that like. Or like with the podcast, for example, it's like, mm -hmm. let's say you want a bunch of people to listen, you're going to have a million monthly subscribers or something in, yeah. in five years or whatever, yeah. right? It's like, everyone's like, oh, I like want to do that right now. It's like, well, yeah. the first step to getting five million monthly subscribers is getting one monthly subscriber. One subscriber, right? yeah. And like, just, you got to start there and then you yeah. go to two and then you go to three and then it's like 10 and then it's 15. And like, when you get that first one, like, even though everything's not perfect, even though it's not like all there, like you get the first person in the door that feels good and then you can just keep going. Right? yeah you gotta just like keep advancing and yeah and to even branch off of that back yeah. to jim quick i was listening to yeah. the podcast um they said something it was like micro tasks yeah he's a they use the term called micro tasks yeah it's literally like like one step so if you want to go run one step towards your running shoes yeah. can you do that if you can do that you can do another step yeah so like podcasting it's like what would be the first step is like yeah, saying i want to do a podcast like and actually meaning it or writing it down, I'm going to do a podcast about this. Yeah, and then you can cross yeah. it off the list. Cross it off the list. Or or getting a camera. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's like the first step. And people kind of ignore all the all the prep work it takes. And they're like, I want a subscriber. You don't realize that you have to get a domain. Yeah. You have to have cameras. You have to have another person to talk yeah, to yeah. or a recording device. You have to you have to get it on some platform. It's like yeah. a like even one subscriber, that's like a million subtasks yeah, like little things that we just ignore and don't realize the amount of like yeah, that like crazy yeah. processes that are going in our brain just to get out, just to get there. Like, yeah, but like if you if you don't go for that like one person, like you yeah. know, you, you can't, when you're like, oh, I'm gonna get the five million people or whatever, right? Like yeah. you, you have zero idea that all of like the tiny little things that you're talking about, like all yeah. of the stuff that you have to build, like you have to like go do all of that. And the only way you're gonna figure out all the little like stuff you have to build is by like trying to get the one person. Because yeah. then you have to like realize like, whoa, I gotta step even further back. And then yep. it becomes a very simple like, I want this like very basic thing. These are the steps I have to take. And uh -huh. I, I like when life like sets itself up like that, where it's Me just too. like, these are like the clear steps go. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And my, my big thing is like, I want to enjoy what I'm doing. Yeah. And yeah. I, and, and I finally got to that where I want to actually have content and talk about things that I enjoy totally. and with people that I enjoy talking to. Yeah. And as I, I, my, most of my life was trying to figure out what I like. Yeah. It took me a long time. And once you figure out what you enjoy, uh, sometimes like the things like podcasts yeah. falls into place. Cause right. once you study enough and you meet enough people and you have enough perspective, yeah. then you, you could literally just put on a, a recorder and like talk about your day. Yeah. And, and it's just like, it's crazy what you can like tap into and who you can relate to and yeah, not even realize yeah. it. And you, you put it out there and then it, it just falls into place. Like, it's not even like a number at that point. It's like, you just make awesome stuff. And, yeah. and um, for me, even as like, I, I just started Amazon affiliate. Right. I got like, it was like the first day I got like 21 clicks. I didn't, I, did, I just added uh, um, links to videos I already had. And yeah. I was excited to have 21 clicks. Like That's it's great. actually going from this platform and someone saw a video and clicked a link. Like for a video that I just kind of, this is from like a year ago that isn't yeah. like too much work it was like right. on my iphone but it's like and it's going to this other platform definitely and 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 they're picking it up and there's yeah. like a, a a chart and i'm just like that's so cool yeah yeah. and like that analytics for the little guy like me just like yeah i i love like it kind of makes me want to wake up in the morning like to see exactly see that. like when you're like creating things and you're like doing stuff like, yeah that that's like what the most exciting stuff in life is and like mm -hmm. you know i I'll be the first one to say, like, I'm probably talking from a huge place of privilege. Like, I've gotten, like, a lot of things like, handed to me. And I also went yeah. after a lot of things. But, yeah. like, um, th that's like, the fuel for, I think, people is, like, what, like, really refreshes your soul is, like, mm -hmm. doing things that are interesting to you that, like, yeah. make you empowered. And, like, you go for it, right? Yeah. Like, the, the stuff that, like, gives you a bit of voltage, right? Exactly. Yeah. And I, I love that stuff. When you go, like, you find those things, like you said, that you like, right? Like, 
just be honest with yourself about that and like go after them do, like, do them yeah a lot of times they're weird they're not widely accepted um which but is now, like so funny because like that, i know like all of this stuff that's not widely accepted right like I, I think about the iPhone, right? Like, uh-huh. the, the first people to use an iPhone were, like, fringe users. They were, like, weirdos. Oh, like, yeah. Using, like, we, I think we talked about this. Yeah, like, what, what, what were they called? Yeah, like, the like the very first people. I don't know if they had, like, a specific name. There's a name for, like, Apple fanboys. Or yeah, yeah, fanboys, right? I, like, people would be uh, like, are you Apple fanboy? I'm like, no, I just freaking like iOS. It's so clean. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, but it's interesting because it's, like, there were people who were like, oh, you know, touchscreens are never going to take off. Like, that's so dumb, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It's like, then, like, guess what? Apple becomes, like, one of the biggest companies in the world. The I biggest know, right? Or whatever, right? Like, it's crazy to think that, like, you, when you build these things, and, like, when you go for them and you're on the fringe group, like, it doesn't matter. Like, you just have to find people that, like, love you, really care about, like, what's going on. And, and then you just, like, I don't know, like, pursue that thing. It doesn't matter if it's fringe or not, you know? Yeah, and that's the weird thing is how resistant humans are to change. Yeah. But we are constantly changing beings. You can come in. Yeah, we we yeah. our cells are replicating at you know every day like how many it, it's it was like uh, a month i think what is it like all of our cells almost yeah like, it's over like every, a year every, like, almost every years cell. we're like literally physically yeah. a new being and but we're so resistant to these like other yeah. small scales of changes it's the right. weirdest like humans are walking paradoxes yeah and, um, when you can use paradox as as like a blessing or like an advantage yeah um, like in the alchemy book I showed yeah, you, yeah. um, that they, they flip paradox as a way to, as like a positive paradox yeah. is cool. And it's something we can work with right, instead right. of considering paradox as being like this, this lock of like positive, negative, neutralized, yeah. we're stuck. Yeah. It's like fringe. It can, it can eventually grow and expand into something cool. It's one of my dad's favorite lessons is like life is like paradox, right? Like there's so yeah. many things that are paradoxical. Don't make sense. But like, that's kind of, that's point. okay. Yeah. You can be contradictory. Yeah. Like you can. You can do this and then like one day do something else that completely yeah. contradicts it. And as long as you, I, I, I like it when people can acknowledge it. Yeah. Be like, I'm sorry. Like I, it is a little hypocritical like, yeah, yeah. as I'm growing and changing, like my viewpoints on things yeah. is expanding and I'm, I allow myself yeah. the ability to make mistakes. Right. And um, I also recognize it and can own it. Like taking yeah. ownership for your hypocrisy or your paradox. Right. And um, when people can recognize that, like that really goes really far yeah. for people, especially like, in relationships and stuff. Yeah, definitely. Because a lot of people don't want to be the person that's at fault, you yeah. know, or the hypocrite or like, so people try to cover up their tracks. And I think that leads people away from self-actualization because you yeah. uh, like sometimes will deny aspects of yourself. And yeah. Like to be right or step something. Step number one is realizing like, if you did it, you did it honestly, like whatever it was, like you did it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then step two is stepping back and being like, okay, like what are the things that I'm like doing honestly that I enjoy and like, and then are there things that I'm doing that are contrary to like against what I believe? Yeah. Um, and if you do that, like change it, like yeah. that's it. Like th- it's very simple, you know, but it's so hard cool. to live by. Right. Dude, I feel like we got into the flow, yeah. like Samadhi. Yeah, uh, like, you guys off. I'm no, sorry, no, no, yeah, no, like, <laughs> like, like, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, Michael's okay, super yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. here from Airbnb, it's like yeah. I feel like we're doing like an Airbnb, like just yeah. I mean, maybe like, you should do regular, dude. I was thinking, it's a great like, idea, dude. We yeah. should we should go on a road trip to yeah. Colorado and sure. like film it, make a production out of it, and dude. like like pitch it to Airbnb or something. We, yeah, of course, wow. we can put it on YouTube. That's very interesting. But I'm like, yeah. I don't know too much about Airbnb's ethics or if I say be, I love, I love the platform and yeah. I love doing this. So I'm yeah. like, I support. I Dude, support. I feel like you're like the definition of what a good Airbnb host <laughs> right? or just like a host yeah. in general should be. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. Yeah, you're like at the end of the day. What it, I mean for like maybe younger generations, I don't know, maybe in general, but like, well, yeah, you're just compassion. very like, compassion. Yeah, cool. that's exactly. my thing. Like, Dude, we're friends now. It's not yeah. even about being like, yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I was like we became it's not friends. Even and like, that. like you and I are friends. I feel like, like, like I feel like I'm in my own house. We're like yeah. a friend's yeah. house. You yeah. know what I mean? Like maybe I shouldn't draw. I gotta be careful to draw lines. I get too comfortable, right? Yeah, so but I, it's like, I try to draw the you, line. Yeah, exactly. No, you made it very clear. Where it's like, yeah, exactly. But like you came with us the first day, like literally five minutes after we got here. Guys, like let's go on in i'm like i was gonna do all these like projects i'm like you yeah. know what like this is a prod like this yeah. is more this valuable is a project than a project itself. Learning, yeah. meeting people like yeah. like conversing and like relating to people like that's, 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 that's 
and that's like you can take away so much from that. Like, yeah, and a it, like, friend, like that, that's forever. Like, unlike the the ethos of Airbnb in terms of like making this like a reified project, um, right. like that's how they started, right? Like mm-hmm. yeah. the reason it's called Airbed and Breakfast is because like Brian Chesky and like the other founders, they like had to make rent in their apartment, mm-hmm. and then they were like, right. and this is a huge Silicon Valley story. So like, oh yeah, probably, yeah, dude, keep it going. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, you get a restart. Yeah, you can say that it's like if yeah. it's not a hundred percent verbatim. Yeah, like, you yeah. can let them know. But, like, but basically, they were like. There's this design conference in town, mm-hmm. and like, let's just invite some people. We have like three airbeds. Let's invite some people. The conference, all the hotels are sold out. We'll just mm-hmm. like have them come in. And that was like the secret that they uncovered is like, before like imagine it's crazy to be like, oh, I'm gonna stay in someone else's house. Yeah. Like, it's insane. But then they that was like the secret they uncovered is like, people like connection. Like they like yeah, caring exactly. about other people. But they like an excuse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have a reason to go make a connection like you, right now. You wouldn't like, come yeah. to my house like as a stranger. Like yo, yeah. I'm from Colorado. Yeah. Well, especially house, in our like, day and age, it seems so strange, right? Because yeah. it's like social media and yeah, technology yeah. and all that yeah. stuff. It's like we're so diverted from like normal human interaction yeah. where it's like it kind of bring, brings it back. And that's yeah. what I said. At the end of the day, like you're probably like at the root base of like what Airbnb should be. Yeah. yeah. Like I came to a different so cool. city yeah, I've never yeah. been to before. Yeah. And now we're like chilling no, and like no, you came to your house, house and it's like, yeah, you showed me around the town. Like I know yeah. I feel like a local almost, bro. You know, you get yeah. integrated with somebody. Basically that, I'm saying they'd love it. Yeah. They would for sure. Yeah. 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 So like that, that's all they talk about. It's like the hosts are the kindest people you're ever going to meet in your life. Yeah. And like, that's like the point It's like connecting people is like right. Airbnb. Like yeah. it's, you invite people into your home, right? Yeah. Like, to invite someone to your house yeah, is yeah, a big crazy. thing in itself. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. And it, it's been, it's been, I would tell you, it's been a million times better than any roommate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> scenario we've had. It's been oh, so yeah. much better. People are just like respectful of your space. Yeah. We like, we are trying to like, we're still uh, like forming, storming. Yeah. Storming, forming, norming. You don't yeah. create norms with these with people yet. You're like, yeah. you're like, oh, we're really it's different. okay. It's safe. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. So everybody's really respectful. Yeah, like I still don't know how much coffee to put in the coffee. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. And it's okay because it's like, you don't know. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's not like we've been doing it for six months and like yeah it's like yeah. coffee maker's broken it's yeah like, yeah yeah dude it's like yeah you just put like half as much and it's still good yeah. but then it's like kind of cool because we got mud and now i'm all hyped up yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, so whereas i wouldn't have done that like, so oh, yeah yeah i think so they have experiences in airbnb but yeah. like there could be like even another app for like like coming to town and actually hanging out yeah, yeah. and like showing people like oh what type of experience do you want do you want like to create art or something do you want to go out and like have the yeah. nightlife do you want to go see music do you want to go to the park like there's so many different facets of yeah. like connecting and make, building community that we could do yeah like um and integrate in there that we could be used more and uh, another thing yeah i um we tried to i was on bumble like yeah. typically it's used for a dating app but yeah. i like sometimes i'm in the, uh i'm in the military and i was at this training uh on this training base that was so stale so boring to me yeah, and there sure, was an sure. Air Force base nearby, and okay. I'm just on like I'm on like all sorts of apps, just like where are people at? Yeah, the people yeah. that I was with were conservative, conservative in the sense that like they're just they had a certain way of thinking that wasn't super stimulating to me. And sure, sure, sure. And so I met a friend on um, Bumble Friends. Yeah, and I started hanging out with them all the time. And then there was like this thing we submitted our picture and our story to Bumble. Yeah. To. Um, support the bumble friends thing like yeah best friends now and i still talk to that person and i think they live in uh, las vegas or i might go yeah. visit them sometime yeah but like that's that's another i like a story of an app yeah connecting people and friends and giving me like a way to to be happier yeah, yeah. To, to meet people that are more like-minded and yeah uh, we had some awesome experiences so yeah like adding that connection element to airbnb because i think a lot of people as hosts they think that they have to be professional and kind of yeah. like hide yeah. Whereas, like, a lot of people... I was like, expecting that, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah, and then, but, like, I think a part of the whole experience is, yeah, meeting people that aren't from your space, and it yeah. expands your perspective, your mind. Palette. Like, yeah, you, like, mind mean palette. palette. Bro, like, yeah, honestly, yeah, yeah. yeah. Everything, so, yeah. And that's, I think it comes back. Yeah, I'm going to let you guys be. I think we're going to head out. Um, awesome. We'll be, like, in the town area. I don't know what time that concert starts. Yeah. I don't want to cut it off. Podcast. Okay, cool. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. No, but, that's um, too I'll text you. Text me. Wait, so me. you're headed like downtown? Downtown? I think so. Yeah, we're probably going to so, cut this off here soon. Yeah. We can just chill and wait a little bit. I mean, I don't yeah. want to cut you guys short. You guys vibe out, do you? I'm going to get more thing. ride. I think, I think yeah. we're coming to a close. Do you have yeah. anything else you want to say? I think we can talk for hours. James. I think Dude, we can honestly, talk, yeah. yeah like, straight up. Like, I think we got an awesome, like, <laughs> this is yeah. awesome. You came in at a good time. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, so. Yeah. Um, no, let's close it out. I think if I was going to say one extra thing, 
there's a, a quote from like Ralph Waldo Emerson that I really, really like, and you made me think about it a lot, but it's, it's like, walk towards God with no mediator or veil. Okay. And like, the point of the quote is like, we were talking a little bit about like, oh, like the things you want to do, the stuff you want to go after. Like, mm. the, the reason that quote is so important to me is like, you got to just like let the other stuff aside and just yeah. like go on your own path. Like exactly. that's like the point. Let like, it that's go. the lesson. Yeah. And that's what I that's what I like love about you guys so much and appreciate yeah. is like I felt like I could go like hang out with you guys without yeah. any sort of like judgment or restriction. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it could be weird yeah, where like my that. cat dad had and like you guys <laughs> don't even say anything, whereas like Someone else yeah. in this town that's maybe does is on a different wave is like, oh, what is that? Like, yeah, some shallow state of mind. Yeah, whatever yeah. I feel like doing. Yeah, like, exactly. Just, and, oh, this is a hat. And this shit. I think the first night we talked about this, of like, yeah. dude, I just like got it. Like, this kid gets it. Like, we like, yeah, I mean, dude, like, even talking to you on the phone, like, man, like, yeah, yeah. Like, I just I straight up, quick. I saw him saying what up to you, and I was like, okay, so this is the guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting there alone the whole time, so I was like, yo, oh. you're James' friend. Like, yeah, yeah, we were supposed to hang out. Yeah, no, but you told us, and I saw him like talking to you, and so. Oh, this must be the guy. Yeah. So exactly. I figured I'd introduce this myself because I mean, <laughs> you sit in the corner, love. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm like, yeah. all right, I'll say what else. Well, I was yeah. just gonna. I was gonna. If James is cool, you must be cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you're cool, then he's cool. Yeah. yeah. Dude. We're all cool. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And that's like the point, right? You yeah. like. Those you're gonna see those other people. You're gonna want like want to walk with them, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I thought you guys were gonna be for being late, like I was like, oh, I'm gonna look like a cornball. And these are here. Is that okay? Yeah. They want. What's up? This is the studio. Sorry. Studios. Yeah. So I was late to the the uh, boat and I missed it. Yeah. Right, well, is, you invited all I invited of us to like this like to boat to cruise this and lacrosse. Like, super oh, fun. Shit. I fucked yeah. you up. My bad. All right. I'm just gonna tell them. You guys will be done in a second. Yeah. We'll be yeah. Done in a second. <laughs> you know, this boat is cruise. Story, right? Like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll end on this because it's really yeah. funny. It's like how I met Michael. I think yeah. another like reason that this is super funny is like works out. so I had been staying with James like earlier this week and then I, I transitioned to a different Airbnb later um, because they took your spot yeah they took That's my spot <laughs> yeah. yeah so like uh, and that was meant to be meant to be shit. yeah so like uh, but James shot me a text and he was like yo you want to come on this boat thing and I was like yes dude absolutely I do and mm -hmm. and I think what's really funny is like uh, James invited both of us so like michael who we just talked to and then yeah. like myself trying to bring y'all together yeah all and then cool. uh james was actually late to the boat he missed the boat uh but then it Same ended up that so. michael and i gotta be friends doc and i gotta meet crystal and, yeah uh, without Megan. my interference like yeah it just worked out perfect and, and the fact right. that i still showed up yeah. despite being like oh they might think i'm weird i took a risk like maybe yeah. i was gonna jump on the boat like the movies that, but like, i couldn't find <laughs> a cool i couldn't find a cool spot to jump on the boat I was yeah, like, yeah i'm going like i i like to i think rules are made to be bent yeah and that's what we're doing we're bending more because we're like yeah um and i was gonna jump on the boat but i was like this isn't safe and yeah i, I was know. actually really bummed out i was like but mainly because i let you guys down because I, yeah. I invited you guys all together and i wanted to be a part of this experience yeah. of you guys meeting each other and the stories yeah then i'm like oh, okay i'm just gonna try to go home and start pick up where i started because i yeah. could just sit down and like just yeah. be bummed out but i like I FaceTime my dad and he's in, he's in florida yeah doing his own thing like florida's crazy with hurricanes and yeah it's yeah. like He's trying to figure out where he fits in, and I'm just like, man, I relate to this guy too. And yeah. just keep it moving, and um, keep the podcast. And yeah. um, life happens. That's okay, man. yeah. And and I realize boats are not things to be late to, like ships, <laughs> cruise, <laughs> cruise ships. Like that's, a, say, that's the quote. We boats are not things ship. to be. Yeah, we run a tight ship around here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that means like they don't they don't do three minutes late. I'm like, it's only three minutes. Like, no, dude. <laughs> like, we live at three thirty sharp. Yeah, no, that's yeah. super funny. Boats are not things to be late to. Yeah, that's no. quotable. So yeah, um, close this out, man. Yeah, thank you guys for watching. Uh, this is a costume. Uh, check out uh, uh, if you like tie dyes, things like this. Uh, Akashic sky dyes. Um, Akashic Creations is gonna be a website coming yeah. coming soon. Uh, Akashic skies on YouTube this is probably where this is gonna be. I'm gonna do Akashic Creations on uh, Apple Podcasts, I believe, Spotify. Um, that's the only plug. I have an Etsy store, Kashi Creation in the US. Sure. Uh, you got any plugs for websites or anything like that? I think I'm okay. I'm pretty much just like, thanks for having me on. This yeah. is the first podcast I've ever been on, right? Very, yeah. very cool. Thank, yeah. Thanks for the conversation. Yeah, thank you. And that's it. Health, happiness, and abundance. Peace and love. Sweet. Cool.